All right, let's roll. We're broadcasting. We're going to be waiting for people to enter in on Zoom because we're on so many platforms at once now. And uh, we're going to be talking about the ultimate follow-up plan for 2021. Wesley Roca from, uh, God. <laughs> Link you. I, no, no, Link I, I know Link you. I was just laughing because we have Link you, but we have so many other platforms around. We're on Clubhouse, Zoom, Facebook. I wanted to list off everything. So yeah, Wesley's just join Link us. <laughs> Wes, Wesley's with Link you. And uh, Wesley's one of the most thoughtful, intelligent, and strategic people I know in our industry. You really are, Wesley. And I am grateful to be here with you. So when you were laying out the ultimate follow-up plan for 2021, um, where did you start? You know, I thought, okay, um, where have we all been like, maybe not doing so great at in 2020 with our follow-up, right? So I think a lot of people would probably say, they wish they could have followed up more with their past clients and their database. Um, some people feel a little guilty about that. Some people feel a little bit uh, anxious about it, you know, putting that off. But that's something where I would say is a good place to start. I love it. And um, yeah, we talked about, I think, a little bit ago about just working your database and, and how that could turn into to money and funds and commissions and everything else, right? right we, we did, but let's go deeper today. And so we have a number of people here live with us on the Zoom. We have people watching on Facebook. If you're on the Zoom live with us, uh, if you guys have questions, there's a Q&A box at the bottom. Go ahead and type them in q and A. If you're on Facebook, um, I don't know if anyone's monitoring the Facebook feed. They can cut and paste them here. We got people all the way from Hawaii to Virginia to uh, Ventura in California, all across the board uh, listening, Wesley. So, all right. So, we're talking about something in 2020 that was, la you know, people could step up their game on for, for follow up, other than just say doing it. When yeah. they really start to look at the ultimate follow up plan, what do they have to do first? So I think where you have to start, and I don't know if we we did this one. We're talking a lot, uh, leaning towards Facebook. Um, no, it just says all the yeah Facebook marketing plan. So there's a couple things. Um, when it comes to your ultimate follow-up marketing plan, whether it be on Facebook or whatever, I think it comes down to starting with like, who am I going to follow up with? Like, where do I start? And that usually comes to just doing a little organizing, a little house cleaning around your database. So where I usually start is my last 12 months or the last 12 months of transactions. So who are your past clients? That's usually like the starting point who are the past clients for the last 12 months? And then I might go last 24 months, last six, 36 months. Once I have that kind of figured out, I don't know if you guys know this, but you can actually categorize people in your, as your Facebook friends, you can categorize your Facebook friends and give them whatever category you want, right? So some people don't know that, they just know friends and public, right? When you post something. Uh, but you can actually go into Facebook and you can actually create, when you go to look at your friends, there's a way, they're called friends lists. So write that down, friends lists. So if you're looking on the left menu on Facebook, you'll find friends lists. And then there you'll see some of the default ones. I think they have like close friends and friends and whatever. And you can create one called past clients. So that's where I start. You have any past clients on your personal page? Put them in that category. Um, and again, I just start with those last 12, 24, 36 months or so. And then from there, I move into any other acquaintances and then, or, um, my SOI sphere of influence, any of those people. And then I really just start, um, categorizing them. And are you recommending, do people do this kind of all along? They sit down once, do it, and then it's set up for the year. I mean, how, what's the best practice for people typically? Yeah. So if you haven't already set up your categories in Facebook, then you're going to want to, like I say, schedule like one hour in a week or something, right? And maybe make an effort to schedule or to categorize like 50 contacts to start with. Um, maybe a goal, right? To, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to categorize um, 50 contacts this week. So you go into your Facebook, you go into wherever, and you just work through categorizing that piece or set up your lists. Um, some of you, I guess to go back I, one more step, Jesse, on that, 
is where do you start? I guess you'd start by just creating your categories, honestly. Like what categories are they going to be in? And so, you know, past clients, I've got my leads, I've got my maybe agents, service providers, um, professional services, things like that. SOI, who's my friends, who's my family, that kind of thing. And so, yeah, I just start with my, my uh, organizing, creating the categories, knowing it's almost like putting the buckets out, right? So that way, you know, where those, co- what buckets are going to go into. Cause a lot of time you just start with like a couple buckets and you just start dumping freaking contacts or people into it. Or like, if you think about your Facebook friends, think about it. They're not in any buckets. They're just in friends. <laughs> so you have like 2000 people in friends. <laughs> right. and, 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 and once we get these categories, I will, I do want to dive into, okay, great. You've categorized them now what, but before we get there, I'm going to get, there's a couple of questions popping up and guys, please keep typing the questions in. These are good questions. I'm going to continue to ask them kind of as the ones that they're appropriate. I'll ask them later. Um, someone was asking, can you upload like Excel spreadsheet of all your past clients? Um, like upload that into Facebook, not, not as your friends or anything like that. You'd have to invite your friend people to be your friends. Um, I may, I think I'll touch a little bit on the retargeting aspect and custom audiences a little bit later where you can upload your, um, contacts for custom audiences. Um, but that is more like an ad thing, not an organic friends thing. And, so, and let's break that. And let's break that up both ways for follow-up. Cause I love the organic versus paid. Um, uh, Mary's asking, can a contact? So when we say contact, by the way, in, in Facebook, we're talking, these are friends. We're basically talking about organizing your friends. Can, can a friend be in more than one Facebook category is the question. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. In fact, I'll go on my face. I'll go to go. I'll share my screen. If you're joining us on Facebook, we're on Facebook live on lab code agents. Um, where there's a Zoom, there's a live feed. So however you're watching this, I'm going to go ahead and just share my screen uh, on this real quick. But basically, if you're looking at your Facebook page, um, let's see if I shared the right screen. Basically, if you're looking at your Facebook page, you're going to see on the left menu, right? Just expand that. And then you're going to see something called friends lists. Friend lists. There it is. Okay. So friend lists. And then on friend lists in Facebook, you can create however many lists that you want. And now you can categorize your Facebook friends and put them into buckets. So, so while you've got this open, why don't you just so show us? So once you get them in the buckets, what's the benefit? What, how does that help you with follow-up? So for example, one really cool thing um, that you can do is let's say I put all my past clients in a past client's friend list on Facebook. Then I could go into my past clients and then uh, what it's going to do, it's just going to show me everybody. Um, I guess I only put Tristan in there. <laughs> but, <laughs> what you're, but all my people in this list, it's going to show me all their posts only. So what does that mean? Well, think about this for a second. Typically, you're, if you want to like be seen by your past clients or those people, right? You have to like scroll through Facebook and Facebook's an infinity pool. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. So think about how long it would take you. How many hours would you have to be on Facebook to post or comment or like your client's posts? You don't know. You would have to scroll forever because you don't know if Facebook's going to show you or if it's going to show you every client. But if you can just click on past clients and it shows you all the posts from your past clients, then it makes it very easy. So I can go in here and impress Tristan by liking all his posts, right? Or wherever my past clients are, kind of getting a feel. I get an idea. I don't have to spend a ton of time. I could get an idea of what's going on. I could see you spending a lot of time on Clubhouse, right? And I just go through and I can maybe comment on stuff and whatever. And now it looks like I'm very involved not looks like, but I am more than I normally could be. I'm very involved in, in Tristan's posts. So how can you imagine you being able to do that with your past clients, right? Even if you just did this one thing, now this is a way that you can really be seen more often by your, 
Uh, it could be past clients. It could be anyone in your database. It could be coworkers. It could be um, your partners. It could be people you're following. It could be Dream 100 people, like people you want to work with all these people now, and now I don't have to sit there scrolling on Facebook for hours to try and be engaged. I could be very, very specific, and I could be very strategic with my time on Facebook by going to, by just simply organizing my friends on Facebook and spending that time. So I could spend 30 minutes, I could block that into my calendar, and I could just go through. I love it. Love it, love it. So I, um. If you guys have questions on this, but the, the whole idea behind this is becoming more efficient and categorizing it. I love it, Wes. And someone just asked a question. It looks like they're asking it to me, but I'm going to turn this back over to you, Wesley, because they, they, they said, how long did it take me? They're asking, Jesse, how many years did it take you to acquire over 4,000 Facebook friends and how did you accomplish this? And I'm going to turn it over to you, Wesley, if you have strategies, because my short answer is anyone that you want to do business with, anyone that's a potential that, you know, to do business on the buyer side, the seller side, on the agent side, um, you just add them. And it's over to how long did it take? I don't know, however long I've been on Facebook, long time. But I, I never consciously set out to go add thousands of people. That happened organically through over the years of just every time I found someone, I'd add them. Do, do you have strategies, Wesley, that you, that you use to add people on Facebook? Or how do you, what do you recommend on that? You know, everyone kind of has their different. And you have to keep in mind that Jesse, he's a moderator on lab code agents. So more than likely he's going to get a lot of followers from his involvement there. And that's generally whether you're on clubhouse, whether you're on lab code agents, wherever you're at, right. You're going to get followers from wherever you're delivering value and you're being engaged and people are going to want to follow you and be friends with you. Um, which is why I think Tristan's probably maxed out at the 5,000, you know, Facebook friends, right? Just like uh, now me, I don't, I, at, I, I don't use my Facebook page that way. <laughs> uh, I only like, I was basically just adding only people I know. And I still do that technically right now. So like people request friends for me. And if I don't know them, I don't typically add them. So I have a lot of pending requests, but it's up to you. Like if I was an agent, I would probably um, be a little more open with it and a little more strategic. So I will say when I do accept people that I'm not sure who they are, I do put them in a category uh, specific to, uh, to that or acquaintance or someone I haven't met yet or whatever, right? I put them into a category because I want to make sure that when I'm putting posts and stuff, like like I just don't necessarily include every single person, especially strain, stranger danger. Uh, all right. And because I use mine a lot for family and a lot for stuff like that. So your by having them categorized, well. your, yeah. your, par your parents talk to you all. <laughs> and and, and while, while you're walking through this, actually, if you want to pull up that screen share again, uh, Brian just asked, can you show us how you arrived at that friends list again? Uh, just kind of pull back up. How do you get to that Facebook friend list? Yeah, it's just going to be, remember on your home screen on Facebook, just go to your left menu and then go to friend, uh, friend lists right there. Awesome. Love All it, right. Love it. And, and yeah. what you're saying of being strategic, the, even though you have a smaller group of people you actually know on Facebook, that's going to be a much higher uh, engaged audience. Wouldn't you agree? That, yeah, that's true. So um, the, the downfall is because before I was only doing family and friends only, um, the downfall there is it's only family and friends. So there, you know, I really started using Facebook only really to share family stuff and do things like that. But as you've probably seen with some of the influencers and you've seen with some other agents, they've really taken a balance between business and personal. And I actually do plan to transition to that. And by using the categories and such, because what I have found is people like Sharon, who's on my screen right now, uh, Tristan, Jesse you know, does this as well. Um, Sam from uh, big block, all these guys, you know, they're, they're maxed out on their friends, but when they post, they're able to talk you're getting to know that person from a personal level, but you're also getting to know, you also get the opportunity to put business opportunities in front of them. So it makes a great lead generation because you have this very niche audience, right? That you've built up. And so now when you post on your personal page, as you know, your personal page gets way more engagement than your business page is gonna get. 
right? And then also as if you're going through and doing what I showed you about engaging with your clients, they're more likely to engage with your stuff too, right? So, so spe speaking of which, while you're on this topic, because there is someone who typed a question in, they were asking, can you move contacts from your personal page to your business page? And I guess my question would be, would you want to? Yeah. So the reason a lot of people want to do that is um, so they can advertise to them. That's really the main reason or so that they can kind of still keep a separation of business stuff and personal. Um, but I would be curious, like I would ask Kelly or whoever was asking that, um, why, what is your main, what, like, in, what are you thinking is the main reason you want to do that? Because there's multiple reasons and I, I could probably go on for a while of like, well, you could do you want to do it this way to do this, this way to do that. So maybe clarify if anyone wants to know how to do that. Why do you want to know how to do that? What is the goal that you hope to accomplish by moving people from your personal page to your business page? Yeah, that, that was Char Charlene that was asking that one. So Charlene, if you want to clarify, I'll, I'll, I'll read off that question too. And before you shut off the screen share, our last question on this topic, we have, um, can you just show how to put someone on a certain list? I don't think we, if we got to that part, like, Oh that yeah. Good, good, uh, good question. So let's just say, um, let's take a look here. All right. Let's just take one of these. Um, are these friends of mine? No, those are okay, friend requests. not yet. They're friend requests. Right. So what I would do is I'd respond, I'd confirm. Then I'd click here and then I'd put it uh, edit friend list. So once you accept a friend, you can uh, basically edit that. And now you could see, I can put them in here, right? And so there you go, that's it. I just edit friends list and now they're there. Love it, love now, it, love so, it. Yep, that's it. And uh, it's very simple. And you could do that with your current friends. You could just scroll through your current friends and and basically go through. And it's the same thing. You just you can do it on the app, or you can do it here and just simply click on that friend and then move them. You know wherever you want them to uh, to go. Yeah, I I actually had a uh, because my friend list is large. I actually had a VA go through and help me organize my friend list when I learned this strategy. It's a lot to go through 4,000 people. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's better to do it. That's why I was saying it's better to set up your buckets ahead of time. So that way, as people come in, they're going in the right buckets out of the gate, right? So right now, a lot of us never set up buckets. We never set up categories, never set up segmenting. So it should be, it's one of those like, uh, what is that, New Year resolutions to finally just put those buckets and start putting uh, those leads in or leads contacts people into those buckets. Cause I don't know if people realize this, but your relationships and your database is like the most valuable thing in the, in your business, especially as a real estate agent. And um, a lot of it's just kind of like, it's like you walk into, and you just throw stuff around all over the room. Imagine, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You just throw it around. And it's like, it doesn't, you don't treat it. We don't treat it that way. <laughs> so, so everyone pause and look around your office. And if you see stuff thrown around, you'll have no, you'll understand why you do it in your CRM also, right? Exactly. Because we don't have time. <laughs> to organize. <laughs> we don't have time. Uh, but then that time comes back at you uh, tenfold, doesn't it? Yeah. I love it. All right. So, and, and we can keep going in this direction. I didn't know if you had any other uh, bullet points that you want to, you want to cover. Yeah. And, and, I'll and start transitioning. And then, yeah, and, well, well, Charlene did, did ask her question, by the way, she did clarify. Charlene was the one who said, how do you take people from personal to a business page? She said, oh, she's a real like estate this. broker and she only wants to market to buyers, sellers, and investors. So. And then she was, to that yeah. And then she was also told, so Charlene also asked, I was told that Facebook doesn't like you doing business on your personal page, which is I'm guessing why she wants to move her personal followers to her business page so she can talk business to them. Well, let me ask you this. How many of your personal friends do you think really want, like what, like, I think where we get confused here is we're like business is on my business page or is I'm going to put all the boring stuff that nobody wants to see. And how do I get my friends to see all the boring stuff that no one wants to see um, so that I'm compliant with Facebook's policies? And my comeback really is like, look, regardless whether you're doing this on your business page or your personal page, 
if the reason is because I want to be able to show them business posts, then you're, I think, missing like the new age of marketing. And what I would say is any posts that you would be doing on your business page should be okay to put on your personal page. What do I mean by that? If you're doing just listed and this and that and articles and just all this stuff that most people don't really care about on your business page because it's business and you can, well, that's why Facebook doesn't show your business page stuff to anyone it to begin with is because of that. So you really have to rethink about how you per- use this as your business page. Look at any of these posts, you know, um, from Tristan and some of these other agents, like they'll post personal stuff and the business stuff, it doesn't really come off as business. It's not like they're posting flyers every other day, right? Because then people would unfollow them. No, they're not. They're It's business, but it's not like what I guess sometimes we think of business as we think about the old style of business, which is ads and promotions and flyers and all that kind of old fashioned marketing. But really what business should be is just relationships for you. So I guess if you're, as long as you're treating it relationship wise, you're being more candid and strategic with your, your posts, even if they are technically, I guess, business, they need to appear social and personal, I guess is what I'm trying to explain. Those business posts should really appear personal and relationship based even if you're posting them on your business page. The only real benefit to having people liking your business page isn't to see your business posts because no one's really gonna see them anyway. It's more to have a vanity metric of how many people are following your business page, right? Because it's really just a vanity at this point and that's fine. And so that you can include them in your advertising audiences, which is what I'm gonna cover in the second part on a couple minutes here. Yeah, and, and I love it. And by the way, in case people are watching in the comments, uh, we did just post a link to your company, Wesley, which is link you, because you do have this thing called the ultimate follow-up blueprint, which tell it's just walks them through step-by-step how you guys can help them stay top of mind. So there's a link in the chat, guys, check out that link. Um, it is well worth checking out. So yeah, the ultimate follow-up blueprint um, is basically, and I'll talk a little bit more about it, but basically what it is, it's it's something I put together after working with um, a lot of agents who were struggling in this <laughs> follow-up, organizing a database, all that stuff. And what I realized is a lot of people got stuck because they didn't really know where to start. It was just overwhelmed. It felt like, hey, like I know there's money in my database. I know I need to be following up more. I know that I need to be on Facebook doing this and doing that. I know I need to do all these different things. I just don't want to feel like I'm bothering them or I don't know what to say or I don't have time to call or whatever. And there's just a multiple of reasons why people don't follow up, right? And so they kind of like figure, well, I need to just get leads because that's how they think is the easiest way to, to, I guess, generate business. But really the fastest way to a transaction isn't to go put a Facebook ad or buy a Zillow ad or whatever. The fastest way to transaction is through your past clients. And then people get stuck on this. Well, uh, they just bought. I don't think they're gonna be ready to buy again. It's only been a year. Like, no, no, no. The repeat business will be there, yes. But yes, that takes time. Uh, It's referrals right? You want to keep fresh because the referrals, um, that's why you want to do this. It's not really about, I mean, the repeat business, yes, don't get me wrong, but I'm sure uh, Jesse can <laughs> can vouch. It's about the referrals. It's about those deals falling to your lap, but systemizing it. A lot of people here, I guarantee you work off mostly referrals, right? Um, does anyone, maybe put in the chat, like if you do more than 50% of your deals come from new opportunities, people you just met off the street or through leads? Or does 50, over 50% come from referrals, people who referred someone to you or something like that? I will tell you what shows up in the chat. All right. How about for you, Jesse? 
so I mean, I'm going to guess that at least 50% come from referrals and past clients. Yeah. And- usually, usually for most uh, the agents I talk to, they say the majority, you know, it's usually 80, 20 come from referrals. The issue is that they kind of end up on this up and down because the referrals aren't always very consistent. They kind of like just like a lot of people probably feel this way. Like that referral just came in right when you're on your last (laughs) dollar, right? Um, Oh, thank God I got this referral. And what people don't really think about is what if you could systemize your referrals? How do you do that? Well, you do it by having a consistent follow-up. I had this realization and tell me if this like, uh, I don't know, makes sense or um, relates. But I had this realization, of, it's, it's something I call like the open door policy. And what I when I realized is in hearing a lot of agent stories and hearing about why people didn't reuse their agent or refer an agent or all these different things, if you're not contacting or actively reaching out or being in front of, and I don't mean being in front of like an automated email. I mean, something that feels like you actually took a minute or 30 seconds or five minutes to actually care or reach out to someone. This doesn't include something that's clear, like a newsletter that's clearly automated from the perspective of the client. So it doesn't take time for you to do that. What I mean is actually, having something that is perceived from the client as you taking a minute to do something for them or reach out to them or make something available. And here's what I mean. Uh, I had uh, a friend, she had, uh, long story short, one of her clients uh, listed and referred someone to someone else. She ended up finding out like in casual conversation, like, Hey, why? (laughs) Right. And the answer was just like, Oh, I just thought you were real busy. You know, I thought you were too busy or I thought this I had, I just heard the other day, someone else like, Oh, I thought you were doing a modeling thing. Cause I guess this agent does part-time modeling is like, I didn't know you even really were dealing with real estate. So you don't know what the perspective of your client is or what they think. And some of you may have had someone ask you, Hey, Jesse, do you mind if I refer my friend Bobby to you? Do you mind? Like, that's what I mean by the open door policy. So when you're not reaching out, you're not, it feels closed door and you guys probably do this too. Don't you kind of feel like you may have someone in your network, you may have someone you know, and you want to ask them a question because they're the best person to ask, but you don't ask and you don't test and you don't call because you think, oh, I don't want to bother them. Oh, I, I, they're probably too busy. And I know we all do this. So that's how your clients feel. They don't want to bug you about, hey, if I had this other bedroom and I sell my house in two months, is that, how's that going to affect my value? They don't want to feel like they're bothering you. So they go on Google and search and they, but they know they could text you, but they don't want to feel like they're bothering you. So how do you create this open door policy so that your past clients feel okay to come to you about those real estate expertise questions and for referrals and for things like that? They have to know that you're open for business. And so how do you do that? Well, you have to show that you actually have time to care for them and the people to refer because they don't want to refer you either if they feel like you're too busy because they want to make sure their friend gets good treatment or whoever they're referring. So that's that's something that I've really noticed uh, big time. And so anyway, this all leads to the blueprint. What does that have to do with anything? Well, what I figure is like if people could figure out or could start systemizing a way that they can follow up with their past clients, have those conversations, right? On a maybe bi-monthly, quarterly, or monthly basis, depending, right? So those touches are happening. So that way that open door policy is established. And if you could do that consistently month in, month out, what that could do to your referrals, your repeat business, your conversions, all that stuff uh, over even just a year, right? By having, the key here is consistently C. And the key here is systemizing your referrals rather than just kind of letting them happen by accident. It's it's all duplicatable systems bring duplicatable results. I I love it. Right. I I really do. So, 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 So is that what people are gonna find if they click on that link? 
Yeah. So on that link, I basically, and you know, I'll log into the platform and kind of uh, show you guys around a little bit, just to give you an idea what I'm talking about. Cause I know some of this has to be visualized. Uh, but basically the idea is if I go ahead and I organize my contacts, right? So this, this blueprint, I take you through, through A to Z. I'm assuming that you need help organizing your contacts. I'm assuming they're probably a mess. I'm assuming they're probably in all different places, right? And How so, do you know? <laughs> right, I already, I, the majority, not all of you, but um, I'm assuming that's all going to be the case for most of you. And so what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to take you through, okay, we're going to uh, go ahead and let me go actually find, I think I have the course in here and I think I can give you kind of an outline. And whether you're buying this or not, this outline works. So even if you're like, even if you don't buy this, this is still the outline you need to take, whether you're doing this on your own or whatever, right? Setting the foundation, just knowing why, understanding the numbers. If you guys were joined us last time, we went through the numbers on the spreadsheet showing you like, oh my gosh, if you just followed up with 90% of your database, uh, instead of 10% of your database or 5% or more often, how that affects your numbers and the number of deals you could do. You can easily double your sales uh, very quickly. Then setting it up, you know, making sure you're using your pixel for Facebook retargeting, making sure, you know, you have your online presence all set up. But what about organizing, getting them together? You know, how do you store them? What do you do? How do you organize them? What categories do you put them in? What categories and tags and like, what's the best practice? Like, how do you do that, right? And then how do you automate those inbound leads so they get quick responses, right? Within less than a couple minutes. As soon as a new lead comes in, they should get a response, you know, speed the lead. That's the game. So there's, they're linking those up. There's, um, how do you strategically set the time to do it? A lot of people try and take it like an ele elephant. Oh, one day when I have 16 hours to, to set aside, I'll get this done. You can't do it, it'll never get done. And you know this because it's been kicked down the can or you just keep kicking that can down the road, right? So how do you do that? And then what happens when you get a new lead opportunity? Do you have a process for that? Probably not, right? It'll probably end up on a, on a post-it somewhere on your computer or an email or on your phone. And then you're supposed to follow up with them in two months when they're ready. And then you forget. And now it gets weird because it's six months later and you forgot to follow up with them. All these different things. So how do you have a system so that never happens again? And then how do you create a campaign? And I'll show you kind of what they look like. A follow-up campaign to go out to your past clients and what should that text message or that email say? What should, when you when they call back or return your call or your text? What do you say on the call? How do you make sure you're maximizing your conversations? How do you turn those calls into reviews, into referrals, into um, you know basically becoming a loyal uh, referrer and someone to promote you? How do you do all that stuff? So I'm not going to go through all of it, but it gives you kind of an idea, right? Following up with leads. Dominating social media, using retargeting, using postcards, one-off and custom campaigns if you want to do like birthdays and anniversaries or um, all kinds of different things like that. It's the uh, blueprint. It's, it's the blueprint, right? That's why I call I it the it. follow blueprint. Nothing, nothing is left out at all. <laughs> um, and then that we show you, I basically teach you how to use uh, our platform essentially to do it. It doesn't matter if you're using a CRM already, that's fine. Um, ours is just more to substitute your efforts. So it's like, if you don't have time to do the five or 10 or whatever calls per day for those past clients, our system can do it. It's kind of the, the idea. So just like, for example, and again, this is, you could duplicate this, I guess, but um, for example, I'll do something like this. I'll put my past clients and I'll launch this. Just a simple campaign. You guys could use this. Hey, it's been a while. I wish I'd been able to st stay in touch more. How have you been? Are you available for a quick call? Maybe later today or tomorrow. I'd love to catch up. And so the automation will basically send out these emails and texts. You'll notice I'm not using any fancy templates. It doesn't look like a newsletter. It's not meant to look automated. It, we want to make this look as manual as possible. Same thing with the text message. 
And then also we can do a voicemail, which I really like the voicemails because I'll leave a voicemail saying something like, hey, saying kind of the same thing. Hey, it's Wesley. I'm so sorry. I haven't been, you know, keeping up with you as much as I've wanted to. Let's catch up. When do you have time? Do you have time later today? Maybe tomorrow? Give me a call back. Uh, I'll try sending you a text. And then lo and behold, guess what goes out next? A text, <laughs> right? Hey, it's me. Wish we've been staying in touch, you know. It's been a while, blah, blah, blah. And then what do you think happens here? Well, people start replying. They start saying, yeah, hey, I was just thinking about you. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you contacted. Oh, yeah, this and that. And now you have conversations. Now you have people to talk to. You add them to your calendar, whatever. They can schedule an appointment, whatever, however you're set up. And then you have conversations. What I like to say is like, could you imagine what would happen with your business if you just had an extra 10, 20, 30 50 extra conversations. They don't have to be long conversations. They can be five minute, 10 minute check-ins. Every month, it would easily double or triple or quadruple <laughs> your business. So yeah. <laughs> I love it. And it's so thorough. Really, really, truly. It's it's one of the most complete, uh, I like they call it the blueprint. It's one of the most complete lists and structures I've seen. It's really cool. Yeah, well, it took forever because we actually had to work. I had to work with agents direct because I had the, I've sold the software for a while. Right. It's just people using it. We very few, you know, they buy the software. A lot of you guys probably have CRMs and KD, KW, uh, what is it, KV Core and Follow Boss, all these different things. And you buy stuff and you don't hardly log in or set it up or use it. So, and yeah. the same thing with our software. We I talked to someone the other day, had it for two years, paying $99 a month, logged in just a couple of times when he first bought it. And he's just, I've been so busy, just haven't been able to do it. I said, well, um, this is a blueprint course. If you're really interested in taking the next level, we have something called the uh, done for you blueprint, uh, which is what I was talking to him about. I was like, well, what if we just did all this for you? He's all, yes. <laughs> So that's what we did. We're like, okay, we'll set it up for you. So we actually go through and we set up the entire everything for it. We work with the agent. Uh, we figure out what list they have, their database, what they're doing now. Uh, how do we fill in the cracks? And then we'll actually go in and configure the entire thing uh, for them. Get, we'll actually even, we even have plans where we can run the whole thing for you. We have other plans even higher where we'll literally be like your follow-up assistant and do all of it, like everything, like sending out, making sure your your holiday cards are sent out, you know, their handwritten, whether handwritten this, that, closing gifts, you can automate like all this stuff. Um, that's obviously a little more expensive program, but the point is finally getting it implemented and done. So I love it. I love the options too. All right, let, let's let's go. We got a we got a fifteen minutes left on the webinar. Um, there's a couple of questions I'm going to go backwards to. And then if you have other things you want to cover, let me know. Sure. We'll make sure we cover them. Um, I want to go backwards to, this is back to some of the Facebook stuff. Because first of all, by the way, guys, please do go check that stuff out later. It is so thorough. And it's just if you, whether you hire Wesley or just start doing some of that stuff, it's going to help you in your business. Truly, right. truly. All right. So here's a question that was back from Chrissy. I'm pulling up the Q&A here going a little backwards. Um, she was, this is back to talking about business pages and personal pages. So, do you recommend posting on a business page and sharing it to your personal page? Is there a better flow? Does it matter? So if you're posting on your business page and then sharing to your personal page, I don't know, like uh, there's really no need to do that. Um, I'm not really sure the benefit you would get. Uh, I think what you're trying to do is say, I think I just go back to, look, I posted a flyer. I didn't do it on my personal page. I shared it from my business page, my personal page, like trying to be in compliance, I guess. But uh, yeah, there's not, there shouldn't really be a reason that you need to do that. Um, yeah. I, I love it. All right. And, and do you have um, this next one? I don't want to go down this, this direction until we know, but do you see a couple of the bullet points you want to make sure we, we go over during this webinar today? Or do we hit most of the, most of the important stuff? Um, yeah. So I guess when it comes to the ultimate marketing plan for 2021 on Facebook, um, the other piece is I think the retargeting, uh, follow-up piece. 
Um, that's something that you can do. Now, I usually don't get into like, how do you do this on Facebook? Cause it's super complicated uh, to get set up for most, you know, most people. Uh, so what we ended up doing is with, on the LinkU platform, we ended up just building out uh, Cause we used to do all that and set it up, but people wanted to control their ads and do stuff on their own. So we ended up creating an ad creator, right? we're like, let's just make it like the easiest freaking ad creator, like on the planet. <laughs> like, how do we do that? Um, and the reason for that is because, you know, if you don't, if you don't already know about retargeting ads, retargeting ads allow you to put a Facebook ad in front of uh, people who are in your database, people who visit your web page or website, people who visit your business page or like your business page. They don't even have to like it. They just need to visit it. Um, so it's something we call like the power of the pixel, right? You may have seen some of my training on that. And so once they're like pixel or they visit any of these places or they're in your database, you can now show them ads. Um, the reason I like this better is because you're putting a little money behind it. So now they're actually going to see it as opposed to posting on your business page and nobody really sees any of it. So what we did is we created like an ad creator so you can create follow-up ads like within just a few steps. Like it literally takes me less than five minutes to go in. I can create uh, an ad to follow with my leads or follow up with my database, right? It's all the same put them on Facebook or Instagram. Um, I want to run it to all my contacts, all my pixeled people. Very, very simple. So this isn't something that you have to be like a, an ad expert to do. You just have to know what your job is. I'm an agent. <laughs> when do you want it to start? Um, what do you want it to do? Well, I guess I could go to my Facebook page or if you have a website, you know, what happens when they click on it, uh, whatever. Do you have a video? A lot of you guys created cool videos. I've seen some cool videos in lab coat people share and, and those are great videos to not just go up once and be seen a couple times and be forgotten. But what if you could run that thing for a while, you know, maybe for a few months or whatever to make sure everybody sees it and gets to know you and know more about you, whether they be leads or whether they be your past clients. And then we also have pre-written uh, copy in here. So in this account, I have the, uh, we had all the holiday stuff already preloaded. Uh, so you don't have to come up with any of that. Or you can use some of our default content, whatever. And then same with the, with the image. You can upload an image, you can use stock photos, whatever you wanna do. And uh, yeah, we make it very, 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 very simple. So super simple, select my image and that's it. So once I do it, I'm like, yeah, that looks good. This is what's gonna go out. Just like I were gonna send an email or just like I was gonna send a letter, or I was gonna send any other kind of follow-up. The difference is this is delivering it through their news feed or their Instagram feed or their social media. But now I don't have to worry about having to post every week to make sure they see me. I just do it once and then I don't have to come back here again to do another one for another two to three months. Um, so I say you can basically dominate social media in what, two to three hours a year instead of two to three hours a week. Um, that's my lazy man's way out of doing social media. <laughs> <laughs> the way all y'all guys are telling us to do it. It's like, I want to, I just uh, <laughs> don't. So I kind of, you know, we create this way to uh, get me out of doing all that work. And I'm sure a lot of agents probably feel the same way. <laughs> I love it. And, and so are you doing that from, this is per one of the questions in the Q&A, I think this ties in. Yeah. Are you doing that from your business page, from your personal page? Yeah, Explain so where ads, you're doing it from. Ads always have to run from your business page. And so that's why I'm saying um, that you have your personal friends that you do all that interaction and really your business page, nothing's happening there, right? So the only thing that makes sense is really like, let me go ahead and go to my, uh, use my business, leverage my business page to run the ads. And that way people do see your stuff. Um, but it's really a combo effort. I mean, if you don't do anything personal, that's fine. You could just do this. You can do both. You could do one without the other. 
you know, but either th- way. But that was that was the distinction I wanted you to make because Chase was asking questions about why do you do some stuff versus another? And it really, to me, comes down to paid versus organic, right? Wouldn't you say that's really the difference between your business and your personal would be where you're putting dollars behind it? Yeah. So, you know, personal is, is fully organic. Um, peep, keep in mind when you're posting on your personal page, only your Facebook friends will have the potential to see whatever it is you're posting, right? Now, let's say I'm getting leads from Zillow or I'm getting leads from Facebook or I'm getting leads from somewhere. Or let's say a lot of you have past clients in a database of people you know or whatever that they're in your CRM, but they're not your Facebook friend. So unless 100% of all these people were your Facebook friends, then you're not, your Facebook posts aren't being seen by them, right? And then even if they like your business page, they're still probably not being seen by them or very little. So that's where the ads come in is you can get this in front of all those people who aren't on your Facebook personal page or personal Facebook friends list, but still maybe in your database, but still maybe visited your Facebook page or visited your web page, or maybe they're a lead. What I like to do is I like to have all these like Zillow leads and realtor.com leads and all these leads come in or anyone I meet off the street or open houses, well, not so much now, but open houses and all this stuff, I would just put them all in here. That way they all start seeing my ads as they're researching agents or they're considering while they're going through my follow-up campaigns. Now they're seeing like my name in a follow-up uh, campaign, like a text or an email or whatever. And they're seeing, oh, this is the guy. Now they're seeing me all over, right? On Facebook or here or there. Now I, I, go beyond that, right? So I go to YouTube and Google and we have plans. We have more advanced plans that take you like you're everywhere online. (laughs) They won't be able to get away from you sort of thing. And I'm sure you guys have seen that stuff. Uh, But it's like, you got to start somewhere. (laughs) Absolutely. And we got time for maybe a few more questions, by the way, guys. I think we've answered most of the current questions. If you have a few more questions for Wesley, type it in here. Um, I love this stuff. This is, like you said, this is really for 2021 and people trying to gear up their business. This is where they need to focus if they want to sell more houses in less time. I mean, this is it. Yeah, it's just, it's simple, guys. It's just like, look, clean up your database, kind of get things in order, right? For 2021, make a a, uh, goal to do that. And Remember that, I mean, everyone, you hear it all the time. Fortune in the follow-up, deals are in your database, sphere of income, SOI equals sphere of income, (laughs) right? I heard that one. (laughs) Oh, no. Uh, My friend Steven says that all the time. He says, uh, anyone know what SOI is? They're like, sphere of of influence, like stream of income. (laughs) So, uh, yeah, it's just a matter of putting into place, not being scared, getting over that fear and um, doing it. Obviously, using something like LinkU helps to re- alleviate some of that because you're, you're. Uh, I think the biggest issue people have is the consistency. Like they do it for a week or two, and then they stop, and then they get back in their old habits. And when you automate part of your, when you automate part of it, the cool thing is like the machine doesn't like have to feel like calling anyone, right? It just does it. <laughs> so um, you're just talking to the people who said, hey, yeah, I want to talk to you. And those are enjoyable, uh, easy conversations to have. doesn't take a lot of willpower to do that. I love it. All right. So last few minutes we have, do you have any other quick tips, things you want to make sure we leave people with today? Um, yeah, I think... Um, what I would probably say is, well, I want to know from the audience here, who is going to take that, I guess, challenge. I should probably, we should probably do a challenge on this one day, but anyway, who's going to take that challenge and start working their database just a little more? Um, not a little more, but what if you make that a big part of your 2021 of your growth plans? I have uh, one client, she spends, uh, she spends a few thousand dollars a month on Zillow, gets a handful of leads or whatever. And she finally, light bulb finally went off for her and was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm spending all this money and all this time chasing around these leads and this and that and all this other stuff. And I'm like, she's all, yeah, I'm just going to, I'm going to spend that money uh, 
on people who already know, like, and trust me. Why don't I do that? I'm going to get so much more out of it. And the light bulb kind of went off. And so she's, she's like, that's where she's going to, she's going to start moving some of that budget from Zillow to past clients, you know, cause no one really past clients are a little afterthought a lot. They don't really get a lot of that advertising budget, unfortunately. Um, even though you're, they're your best <laughs> and lowest hanging fruit to advertise from. So I'm glad we have two people who are going to take action. I think we've really made an impact and, you know, at least one, right. Thank you, <laughs> thank you Christina. Um, thank you, Grace. Up, yes. So yeah, as long as you guys, you know, make that goal, that effort, organize, create your buckets, create your categories, put the people in there and then create a plan that's going to allow you to follow up with them consistently. Again, you mix it all up. You do a couple likes and comments on their Facebook page. You do a text, you do a voicemail here and there, you do an email. It's like, you know, so you're touching uh, them at least once a month in some way, some shape or form. I love it. All right, we got one more. And by the way, I guarantee there are people here. So type in your chat box. If you're saying yes, you're going to take the uh, the consistent follow-up challenge. We'll create a challenge around this, a link you challenge. I love it, Wesley. I'm going to type yes in the box. Type yes if you're going to do this. Type yes in a Facebook comment. Drop your name. Get some public accountability. Chrissy just typed in. She said, yes, she will be doing it. She is still a little confused on where it's best to post. All right, that's easy. It's best to post on your personal page. So if you're going to spend time and effort, my, my, my uh, advice to you is start inviting your past clients and potential people to you or potential leads and prospects to your personal page, put them in the right category and post your personal page. Um, and remember, don't post flyers and all listings and this and that. You have to make it feel social. That's the best way to do it. Okay. And then on your business page, uh, honestly, I would... I would probably just subscribe to one of those services that do like automated business posts. Um, they're like 30 bucks a month or something. And I would literally, that's all I would do on my business page. Maybe I might do some stuff like an event here and there, but the only reason I ever post my business page is if I'm going to promote it to my custom audiences. So I post my business page and I'll boost it to my custom audiences or followers or likes. And that's really it. Cause I know not much is going to come from it unless you have a lot of likes. If you have a lot of likes, then do both. And, and by the way, Tessa just said, we do have a lot of yeses coming from the Facebook live stream. So we have people on zoom. I'm watching, All right. Tessa's watching the Facebook stream. Lots of yeses. Good job. Awesome. You made an impact. Right. And I clarified Chrissy's confusion. So it did. It did. mission it did. accomplished. We are Finally, good. I use somebody. No, I was kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but bottom line, because we're about to wrap it up here. Bottom line is, you just got to put it into action. That's, that's right. That's it. That's right. That's it. And and Tessa just dropped the link. It's probably on Facebook. It's in the Zoom here. Check out the blueprint. Check out the blueprint that from Link U that Wesley put together. If you want to get into action and you're not sure how to do it, a confused mind does nothing. It's one of my favorite quotes that I've ever heard. A confused mind does nothing. Right. So you just want to get into action. Oh, we got one more last minute question sneaking in here, right? With two minutes left, ready? So Tessa said this came from the Facebook Live. Martin was asking, uh, after organic post on your business page, what about sharing on your personal? Oh, I think we, I think we asked that one already, Tessa. I think we yeah, I mean, that one. there's really no point um, after organic post on your personal page to share it on your personal page. There's really no point to do that. If anything, just if it's really good, copy it completely and just paste it on your personal page, but don't share it from your business page to your personal page. You're going to get less, uh, it's going to get less distribution that way. But there you go. So, and, and that was a different, slightly different question. So that was a good question, Martin. I like it. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it, Wesley. All right. This is fun, man. So reach out, take a, take a look at the blueprint. They're getting lots of thank you. Thank you. Thank yous in the box here. If you want to check it out, Wesley, but this yeah, is no good problem. Stuff. Thank really you guys. Um, yep. Check out the blueprint. And I think they put that link. Oh, and by the way, the blueprint does this package that we put here. Uh, it's a very special discount. And the other thing is we give you uh, a starter version of the link you platform so that you can actually do everything that you're taught. So there's no gaps. There's no success gaps. So you're able to get everything done. You have everything you need. There's nothing else you really have to buy or do you have everything there with you so i love it 
All right. All right. Enjoy your afternoon, guys, every, wherever you are, your evening, your morning, your night, you're depending on time zone. Wesley, this is awesome. Thanks, man. All right. Thanks. Talk to you guys later. From LCA. Bye, guys. Have a good Bye. one. Have a good one. Bye-bye.